Here, we will pick up in part two of the schematic capture module, and we will start placing parts on the schematic. Click on the component panel and open it, and then select the miscellaneous connectors library. Scroll down to the list to find the 40 pin IO connector, or to find it faster, start typing header in the search bar. And note the updated reduced component offering. We are narrowing down the options for selection, but we need to be more specific. Add 20 and press enter. And as you can see, only matching results are now listed. To place the component, first select it, right click on the component, and then select place header 20 by 2. Moving over the schematic, you'll now be able to place the component, but before clicking on the schematic page to place the component, hit the tab key. A pause icon will appear. This is a visual icon indicating that we have paused the place operation and can now edit this instance's properties before we place it. If the properties panel was not open before we click the tab key, it will automatically open. Looking at the properties window, we can see the component's properties. The properties window for a component will have multiple tabs, general, parameters, and pins. The parameters tab shows the parameters from the component in the library and the pins tab, as expected, lists the pins. In the general tab view, we see a number of expandable menus possible. The properties section is already opened. This menu lists the designator, or what I call it instance name, and a number of fields taken from the component including the comment field, description field, the type, the design item ID, or library name, and a source library. The typical edit we would perform here is to set the designator. We will enter J4. Hitting the return key exits the pause placement and allows us to continue with the placement of the component with its new designator. Hitting the tab key again, we will look further into the component's properties. We could change the rotation if desired, but there is an easier way to do this when placing the components, as we will see. Please note that this connector is not a multi-part component. To return to placing the component, click on the pause icon and you can resume. Altium will continue into placement mode until we hit the escape key or right mouse click to exit placement mode. While still in placement mode, we can add more of the same component, like so. Notice the auto increment feature of Altium. This can be handy when placing multiple copies of the same components, auto incrementing the reference designators. The orientation of the component comes from the library symbol, and we can change it on the fly, as it were, while it is still attached to the mouse in either placement mode or if we are moving it. To rotate it counterclockwise by 90 degrees, hit the spacebar. You can continue hitting the spacebar to get the desired rotation angle. To rotate in the clockwise direction by 90 degrees, hold the shift key down, then tap the spacebar. Note, you can also click and drag a component from the components panel to place it in the schematic. However, this does bypass the ability to change component properties, such as designator, prior to placement. There are two other orientation operations available to us as well. We can flip the schematic symbol along its X or Y axis. With another connector ready to be placed, hit the X key to flip it on the X axis, and likewise, hitting the Y key will flip it along the Y axis. This feature is useful for arranging the components in a logical way to facilitate connections on the schematics. I must warn you that this flipping should only be done in the components on the schematic and never in the PCB, as that could cause what I call PCB coasters to be created. Footprints generally fail if they are flipped using X or Y, and Altium Designer will warn you if you try. Rotation is the only safe operation to perform. Flipping a component would most likely result in a PCB that cannot work as intended. While there are some exceptions, it is a good rule to just say no to flipping footprints. We only need one of the many placed connectors, so let's get rid of the extras. Selecting the extra connectors for deleting is a straightforward process. There are two mouse selection modes possible. They are, select only what is fully enclosed by the drawn rectangle, or select all that is in or touching the drawn rectangle. Let's make use of another powerful area of the properties panel, that of the selection filter. With nothing selected, we can enable or disable the selection of objects by setting or unsetting their object buttons. Clicking on the all objects, will toggle the existing state, in this case disabling the selection of all listed objects. Now to pick only components, click on the components button to activate it. At this point, only components will be selected when drawing our selection rectangle. 
This can be very handy when editing an existing schematic with a lot of different placed objects, as we can tune what is and what is not selected. To select only elements fully contained by the rectangle, sweep left to right. Notice those elements that are selected were within the rectangle and not just touching. To unselect them, click on an open space in the schematic. To select all elements in or touched by the rectangle, sweep from the right to left. Now we see the difference in selection. You may have also noticed the difference in the color of the rectangle as well, indicating which selection mode you were in. By the way, it does not matter if you start drawing the rectangle from high to low or low to high when defining the rectangle. It is only right to left or left to right motion that determines the selection mode. Once the connectors are selected, hit the delete key and they are gone. Simple as that. One more useful tool feature is the undo or redo. There are icons to make this function easier. We could hit the undo and redo as needed by backing up or re-executing our steps. There are shortcut keys for this as well. The typical Control Z for undo, which restores deleted components, or Control Y for redo to delete them again. I normally use the control keys to get out of trouble, but the icons work just as well. We will pull a 100 nanofarad capacitor out of the WCT library and add it to the schematic as well. To find it in the library, we will use the searching function window. Selecting WCT library, then start to enter C, A, P, shows us the list of components that match this string. Here we see all the caps in this library. Select the 100 nanofarad 0603 size and place the cap calling it C5. Rotate it using the spacebar and place it, then place another capacitor. This completes the components needed for the processor interface. Save it, and let's move on to the Relay I.O. schematic to continue adding components. We will wire up the design in another module. Open the Relay I.O. schematic. We will add NMOS devices for low side switching of 12 volt external loads. To add it, we go to the Components tab, then WCT library and start typing in NTHD to search for and pull up the dual NMOS device. Right click and place the component. Note, the second part of the component will automatically be chosen as the next symbol to be placed in the schematic. This is a basic example of how you place multi-part components. Typically, you would have a multi-part component for the larger pin count BGA devices such as microprocessors. I will go ahead and place the indicator LEDs and the needed resistors. Then the back EMF protection diode for each relay channel. All that is left to add are the two pin connectors. This completes the placement of the components for the installed libraries for the relay I.O. schematic. Save it and let's move on. Opening up the CAN interface sheet next, we encounter a typical design issue. This schematic requires devices that are not in the standard install libraries or the custom WCT integrated library. We want to use the MCP2515 and the MCP2551 ICs for the CAN bus interface. We could create their schematic symbols and footprints manually, but why reinvent the wheel? Let's use a very handy source for pre-made components, the Altium Content Vault. To access this resource, you must have a valid Altium Live account and a current subscription. Let's check on our preferences for connecting to the Altium Content Vault. Under Data Management, then Servers, click on the known servers to open up the server pane. Notice the status of Connected related to the Altium Content Vault. This is due to the checked box next to Automatically Connect Altium Content Vault. This again relies on having a valid Altium Live subscription and account. Click OK to close the preferences. To explore the Altium Content Vault, Use the panel button at the bottom right and open the Explorer panel. This enables us to access and search for components within the online content vault. Note, you will need access to the internet from the machine you are working on in order to reach Altium's content vault. Once the connection is made and we are ready, we can search for the microchip devices. Type MCP2515-E-SO and then hit enter. This starts a search within the Altium Content Vault, and we will see a list of possible candidates. Selecting it, we can right-click and choose Place. Now moving our mouse over the schematics, 
the 2515 device symbol will be attached to the mouse for placement. We will do the same search using MCP2551-E-N and place that as well. Again, remember to hit the tab key and assign a reference designator prior to placement. Or double click the component to bring up its properties window and change it there. If we select the MCP2551 and look at its properties window, notice the library source is the Ultium Content Vault instead of a library. We will continue to place components onto the schematic either from the Ultium Content Vault such as the level shifter IC needed for the Relay NMOS drivers or from the local libraries. There is one other approach that I use in capturing designs reusing an existing schematic. We will copy an existing power supply schematic file into the local project directory and then add this local copy into the project. With the file local to this specific project, any changes made to it in this project won't affect the original project. To add it to this project, simply right click on the project file and select add existing to project. Then select the local schematic copy and it becomes a part of this project. In this module, we covered the basics for placing components into the schematics from various installed libraries and from the Ultium Content Vault. Please do the exercise finding and placing components.